this is a video about the scientific reduction of moral truths. Now, the first issue here, of course, is whether there are actually moral truths. Is a statement like rape is wrong a truth bearer? Does it make sense to attribute truth or falsehood to such an utterance? Broadly, those who claim that it does make sense are what we call moral cognitivists. Those who deny it are what we call moral non-cognitivists. My technique for determining whether a, a particular utterance is a truth bearer or not pretty much straightforwardly grants that status to all statements. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, an utterance is a truth bearer if it just makes sense to prefix it with the words, it is true that. It doesn't make sense to prefix a question with that. Uh, it is true that is tomorrow, Monday, looks like I've suddenly been distracted. As does, uh, is it true that, ah, so those aren't truth bearers. But is it true that rape is wrong? Well, that seems perfectly sensible. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, such an utterance is a truth bearer and I am a moral cognitivist. Now that doesn't mean that uh, rape is wrong is true. That's a question of truth makers and conditions of warrant. All I've done here is admit that there are such things as moral truths. Another distinction of interest is between the moral realist who will hold that uh, the truth of a statement like rape is wrong depends upon some reference to things that are independent of the mind of the person who states it. And the moral anti-realist will say that no, the meaning or the, the truth of that statement actually depends on the uh, utterer's state of mind. Now, by virtue of being somebody who rejects the correspondence theory of truth, I don't have to be a moral realist or a full-blown moral realist simply because I'm a moral cognitivist. I'm in fact a partial or quasi-moral realist. We understand the moral truths not only because they make reference to mind-independent facts, facts to which we seek to fit our beliefs, but also as voicings of mental states to which we want to fit the facts. With apologies to Karl Marx, the point of moral truths is not merely to describe the world, but to change it. So with this understanding of my position in place, let's get on to the main event, the scientific reduction of moral truths. Now, where reduction very broadly is talking about one thing in terms of something else, I think we can fruitfully talk about moral truth in terms of the natural history of thick moral concepts. Thick moral concepts are ideas which feature in our moralizing, our normative theories, but which are much more richly descriptive of particulars than are thin moral concepts. So, for example, um, thin moral properties like goodness or badness are rather abstract and general ideas. Ideas of the sort that one might have to grasp through a priori conceptual analysis. Whereas thick uh, moral properties like uh, courage or wisdom, uh, cowardice or foolishness, are much more concrete and particular ideas. Ideas that one may be able to come to know by observation. Now, another position that I adhere to, in addition to moral cognitivism and partial realism, is called moral non-centralism, which is basically the claim that the thick moral concepts do not depend on the thin ones. Indeed, in my view, the thin moral concepts are rarefications and abstractions from the thick ones. So in being scientific and wanting to study the uh, substance of the matter, the natural subject will be the thick moral concepts. But what kind of study would be appropriate? Two fellow naturalists whose thinking on ethics I draw upon in order to answer that question would be Frank Jackson and Judith Jarvis Thompson particularly Frank Jackson's uh, moral functionalism as found in his 1998 book uh, From Metaphysics to Ethics, A Defense of Conceptual Ethics, and Judith's um, account of virtues as found in her 1997 paper The Right and the Good. 
Links are in the bottom box. I'd say that um, Judith, Judith Thompson's account of virtues is well placed to account for uh, those thick moral concepts. Whilst Jackson's analytic functionalism, his use of Ramsey Lewis, can give us a conceptual framework in which to develop a natural history of those virtues. A natural history informed not only by biology, but by geography and anthropology and economics and sociology. And from that, I would propose we can derive our means of talking about moral truths in scientific terms, our scientific reduction of moral truths. And that's how I would answer the question as to how one would do a scientific reduction of moral truth, had anyone ever asked me. Thank you for listening.